Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before we begin, can I get a quick hands up if anyone took meetings or classes online in the last two years? Anyone? Looks like all of us. Okay, well, please keep your hands up if you took any of those calls like this. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. When, when the pandemic hit, the world stopped for a while, but we had to continue somehow. We continued our studies and work from homes. We ordered food and groceries from our living rooms. And um, you know, we spent countless hours on video calls with our friends. The world stopped for a while, but our hopes and dreams didn't, and we had to continue somehow. But we had the tools necessary to continue. But there are those who, we had electronic devices, internet and delivery services to continue, but there are those in the remote rural areas who are dealing with similar set of challenges. And we don't often see what tools they're using to overcome these challenges. My name is Tawi and I lead a product team in a social enterprise called Proximity Designs. And our team's responsible for designing products and services for small farmers in Myanmar. Since COVID began, We've spoken to many farmers from different rural areas of Myanmar. And today I'd like to share some stories about how, how these farmers are coping with a similar set of challenges and how we can use some of the lessons learned when we design our own lives in times of crisis. During the pandemic, many places went under lockdowns for extended periods of time and nobody really knew when the roads would open up again. This was the same in rural Myanmar and farmers were not able to travel to. Normally, farmers would visit the nearest town to get the farming products that they need. And normally, our agricultural scientists would visit them on the farms and give them advice on how to treat their pest and disease issues. Now, I won't delve into different kinds of pest and disease problems, but just one thing to know is that they always lead to the same outcome, which is low quality crops and ultimately yield loss, something small farmers cannot afford. Just like we needed our devices to continue our work, farmers also needed access to the right information at the right time so that they could continue farming. But because they were not able to get this, they ended up with very poor quality crops. Some used the crops as landfill, some let it rot in the field, while others could only make back a small profit. With this new, with this new set of travel restrictions, we had to ask ourselves, how might we continue to offer treatment advice without any in-person interaction? We then redesigned our service so that instead of our team visiting the farms, we could speak to the farmers over the phones, text and video calls, see the crop conditions and give them treatment advice. And this way, farmers can still access the information they need when they need it most. But the main takeaway here is that our goal to help farmers with these pest and disease problems remain the same, but how we reach them needs to be adapted. And in times of crisis, it's important that we stay true and we remain grounded about our ultimate goals, but remain flexible in terms of how we attain our goals. Now, COVID-19 wasn't the only thing that happened in the recent years. The impact of economic crisis across the globe, it's also felt here in Myanmar. Just a couple of weeks ago, I went out to buy some medicine for my mom and I realized I forgot my wallet at home when I, only when I got to the store. So I noted how much I needed to bring back, went back the next day only to find out that the prices had increased in just less than 24 hours. When we spoke to the farmers, we asked them what the number one biggest concern is. They said they are very worried about the rising cost of fertilizers. Now, this is something happening globally, but when we look at the prices of fertilizer in Myanmar, two years ago, it would cost around 20,000 jets for a bag of fertilizer. And today it would be about 140,000 jets. So that's about five times price increase within the duration of two years. Here, I'd like to tell you a story about how our farmers are trying to overcome this challenge. And this happened during the monsoon season. So it was raining very heavily. One of our team members was traveling back home one day and she ran into a farmer who was carrying this bag of fertilizer on his shoulder in the rain. So she spoke to him and he said, 
it was only around 20,000 jets, but he bought it because that was the only thing that he was able to afford. Now, our agronomist, she, she noticed something. She noticed that there was mud on the back of the farmer, and it was coming out from this bag of so-called fertilizer. When fertilizer is mixed with water, some may dissolve entirely and some won't, but it will definitely not turn into mud. Our farmers needed a better solution yesterday, and they still need it now. After hearing all this, we dropped everything that we're working on and quickly shifted our priorities. And our design challenge in this case then becomes, how might we offer a low cost option when the solution is needed since yesterday? Normally to come up with a solution like this, it could take months and years, but in the past six months, our team has been very busy and soon we'll be able to offer a bioproduct called Trigoderma a low cost option that will help farmers to grow healthy crops at a third of the cost of those expensive inputs. The main takeaway here is that in times of challenges, when the problems that we have are constantly changing and evolving, when solutions are needed very urgently, we need to be agile and responsive to the best of our abilities. We don't have to be afraid to change our priorities when we have to and act on them quickly when we have to. While farmers said their number one biggest concern is rising cost of chemical inputs, their second biggest concern is irregular weather patterns. We spoke to two farmers who were from the villages next to each other, and one told us they had a bad season because of floods. Guess what the other one told us? They had a bad season because of drought. It rains when it's not supposed to, and there's droughts when it's supposed to rain. And it's happening even within the close distance of two villages that were next to each other. There are many primary factors that cause climate change, but one thing that adds to the issue is that burning rice straws on the fields after farmers have harvested their paddy. For those who might not be familiar with what rice straw is, it's it's a byproduct that you get after growing paddy, after you've removed the rice grain and they're left scattered in the fields. When I was a kid, my dad took me on road trips across Myanmar and I remember seeing these burning fields full of smoke and I never really understood why. But now I know that farmers need a way to remove the rice straw from the field quickly and cheaply so that they can prepare the land for the next season. This was their immediate concern, but for the long run, this adds more to the effects of climate change that we're all facing. Not only it pollutes the air, it also takes away the valuable nutrients in the soil. And other practices require tools and materials that are not widely available in rural Myanmar and are expensive. Our design challenge then becomes, how might we help farmers prepare the land quickly and affordably without harming the environment only using tools that they already had access to. Our team has been researching and testing out different methods, but our new method um, doesn't require bunning the fields, can decompose the straw within two to three weeks, improve soil nutrients, and only require materials that are very easy to find in rural Myanmar. But the main message here is that it's in our nature to become fixated on our immediate challenges but it's equally important not to lose sight of the long-term big picture goals. Often when we talk about creating products, it's very easy to get lost in the details, the technical details, but it's very important to remember that we need to stay curious about the communities that we're designing for. We need to remain flexible in terms of how we attain our goals, not to be afraid to change our priorities when we have to, and not to lose sight of the big picture goals that we have for the long run. As much as we rely on our wits and efforts to pursue our hopes and dreams, we also rely on having the right products and the right tools to help us get closer to our goals. There are those of us who might already have access to the tools we need, but there are those who had to use their crops as landfills because they couldn't get access to the right advice. There are those who are farming less because they can no longer afford crucial products. And there are those who had to burn the fields so that they, that because that was the only way that they knew. So today I'll leave you with a final design challenge. How might you create a better world 
in the face of so much uncertainty and ongoing crisis, such that everyone, rich or poor, urban or rural, has the means to attain their hopes and dreams. Thank you.